what's approaching the supreme moment reality striking closer than it seems don't it What's well, good? The Thank You campaign is rolled out for Global and there are a lot of options out of the 77 available units to select 7 of them. I've got Social Fire with me on the video. Hi guys! So definitely make sure to check her channel out and subscribe to her if you haven't already done so. She focuses mainly on Global content and why not watch Dokkan Battle videos with a nice girl providing the commentary, right? <laughs> right. Okay, so you're going to have the option to not only select individual cards out of the seven, you know, selection process, but you can also select uh, the same unit up to five times, I believe. That's what it was in JP, so I'm guessing it's the same for Global. It is, yeah. So this is for, you know, uh, players that want to just prioritize certain units to unlock new paths, so that's certainly an option there. What we're going to do is we're, we're going to rank the top 30 units from best to worst uh, to give you guys a better idea on how to go about selecting the units. Just remember, this is based on our opinions and knowledge of the game, so definitely leave a comment uh, ranking the seven units you're planning on picking. Um, it really comes down to uh, each player's deck, so uh, this is more or less to provide uh, kind of an explanation on some of the best units that we consider. Uh, one last thing is, you have until December 17th to select the seven units, so if you plan on summoning on banners before that deadline, uh, we highly recommend you wait until closer to that deadline so you don't end up uh, wasting selections for uh, potential dupes that you might pull off the summons. Alright, so let's go ahead and start with the rankings. Okay. All right, number one, uh, in my opinion, the Great Ape Turtles is probably one of the best options to select. Uh, for those that don't know, best linking partner for the Agility Turles hits for a very good amount at Rainbow. And also with the recent Grade 8 buffs in Global, uh, definitely improved the uh, unit a little bit. Uh, not a little bit, actually, quite a bit. So the other thing is, uh, you actually only need a key meter at 9 to guarantee an SA because of the passive will increase key by 3 and attack increase of 90% based on a key meter at 9. Uh, falls into three categories, giants, uh, movie bosses, and pure sands. Alright, uh, next one would be the Agility Golden Frieza. Um, he's arguably the best tank in the game. He has 90% damage reduction if HP is 50% or, or above, I believe. Um, he hits for decent amount at Rainbow, and then he's uh, also a high a high rank uh, if you don't necessarily need dupes for this unit to perform well. So uh, it's another good option there as well. Yeah, basically why he's ranked at number two is because you don't necessarily need dupes to be able to use this unit. Essentially what you're using this unit for is for tanking purposes, predominantly. Anyway, so uh, what were the categories that he was on? He's also in Resurrected Warriors, Movie Bosses, Full Power, Enhanced Transformation, and Most Malevolent Clan, so he has quite a few categories as well. Yeah, definitely a very versatile unit and uh, worthwhile to have. If you, if you don't have a single copy, definitely make sure to cop one. Okay, the next one is the Agility Gaku unit. Uh, balanced unit overall, lots of categories with this unit. 80% uh, increased attack and defense as part of the passive, and also the super attack will raise attack. Uh, pretty much a Kaioken mechanic there. Uh, the only reason why this unit's uh, at a higher rank than some of the other Gaku units is because of you know the amount of categories this unit is on. Uh, the categories this unit is on is going to be Realm of Gods, Universe Survival Saga, Pure Sands, and Representatives of Universe 7. All right, the next one would be the Strength Super Saiyan Bardock. So we both agree, uh, this is definitely one of our favorites. He awakens to Super Saiyan 2. He's a great unit overall with that 30% uh, plus attack for all allies. I use him quite a bit myself. And then he's also in the categories Resurrected Warriors and Pure Saiyans. Definitely a good unit. I actually have that unit at Rainbow, and uh, he, does, he does hit for a pretty decent amount. Link skills are pretty much, you know, uh, fair game because of the... Um, you know, it is a Super Saiyan unit after all. All right, so the next one is going to be the uh, Strength Super Saiyan 3 uh, Great Ape Goku, the GT version. So uh, very decent attack with that unit. Uh, great support. Again, 33% increased attack for all allies. Definitely a good thing. Um, does share like Super Saiyan link skills and all that. So you're not going to run into uh, uh, key issues. Uh, falls into three categories, Super Saiyan 3, Giants, and Pure Saiyans. Next would be the Physical Super Saiyan Gotenks, so another great unit overall. He seals SA, which is nice, and then he hits for a good amount at Rainbow, and then his categories, 
He falls in Fusion, which can be pretty limited, so again, that's a great option there. Um, also, Hybrid Sands and Majin Buu Saga. Okay, so coming in at number seven, it's gonna be the Agility Bojack unit. Uh, very good unit for the movie bosses and Resurrected Warriors team setup. Uh, the passive is a attack increase of 90%, and it'll make quite a bit of a difference uh, depending on how many dupe pass you have. Uh, this guy falls into, again, uh, three categories, Resurrected Warriors, Movie Bosses, and also Full Power. Number eight would be the Intelligence Metacooler. Uh, he's a great support unit. He has that plus 30% attack for all allies and plus two key for extreme types, which will become somewhat obsolete with Agility Metacooler, but it's still um, useful if you don't happen to have him. And then he falls under the categories Resurrected Warriors, Movie Bosses, and Most Malevolent Clan. Right, so just like Social said, uh, with the, you know, JP recently getting the Agility Metal Cooler, since it is the same name, uh, it could potentially make this guy a little bit obsolete, but if you're not running a team with the Agility version, this guy is a very good support unit for that. Okay, so number nine is going to be the Strength Goku unit, so very good linking partner for the Ultra Instinct Goku unit. The first Awakened Link skill adds 25% increase to attack. And the unit itself is pretty balanced, attack and defense increase of 80%. Uh, two categories for that one, Realm of Gods and Pure Saints. And by the way, uh, before we get further, all of these uh, skill sets is based on their Dokkan Awakened version. So we're going to bypass anything pre Dokkan Awakened, just kind of focus on the end result itself. All right, number 10 would be the Strength Super Saiyan 3 Goku. Um, he's a good pickup option since he'll get an easy aid in the future with the um, plus 140% attack and the HP is uh, 80% or below. Um, and then defense is plus 40%. Uh, also a great option if you don't have the agility counterpart, um, specifically a ring floor for that reason. And he falls under the Majin Buu Saga, Super Saiyan 3, Pure Saiyans, and Full Power. So that 140% attack increase as part of the passive will be for HP above 80% and not below 80%, just to clarify. Oh, sorry about that. <laughs> okay, so number 11 is going to be the physical type Super Saiyan Goku. This unit is a great unit uh, in specific scenarios uh, due to the high chance to stun enemies. Very, very helpful unit for Battlefield and, and also Super Battle Road. Um, it's, it's worth noting that this unit, when the uh, Battlefield... Uh, Seasons uh, refresh when you're facing Zamasu, the um, extreme intelligence type. This unit is going to help out quite a bit. And this guy does only fall into one category, which is pure Saiyans, but again, uh, great unit for Battlefield and Super Battle Road. Number 12 would be Strength Beerus. Um, he's a great linking partner for LR Beerus and Weiss. Um, he has a high chance of two, plus 200% to attack, uh, which is his passive. Um, he would have ranked higher, but the tech version got an ECA easy re recently, so that definitely helped that one out. And he falls under the Realm of Gods category in movie bosses. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and cover the next two because they kind of go in line together. Uh, number 13 is gonna be the Agility Future Andro Android 18. Uh, this unit actually greatly improved with the Dokkan Awaken. Passive skill has attack and defense increase of 70%. Also an orb changer and great option for the androids on, on a future cat or androids or future saga category. Uh, basically, in summary, uh, this unit can help out uh, LR Future Trunks and LR Self, you know, to, to help them get that 18 key super. Uh, Android 18 falls into three categories, which is Peppy Gals, Future Saga, and Android. So uh, let's go ahead and talk about the physical Future Android 17. Similar uh, type of unit, another key changer, and great option for the Androids category. Again, helps out uh, LR Cell and LR Future Trunks to uh, increase chances for 18 key super. This unit also does have that attack and defense increase of 70% uh, as part of the passive. Uh, this one only falls into two categories, Future Saga and Androids. All right, number 15 would be Tech Final Form Cooler. So um, we both agree this is a personal favorite. He, um, I actually used one of my uh, gift cards on him already. Uh, he hits for roughly 1.6 million at Rainbow. A great option if you don't have the physical version. Um, his SA is really nice. And then his attack plus 90% passive is also great here. Plus he falls under a few categories here, Movie Bosses, Enhanced Transformation, and Most Malevolent Clan. Okay, so coming in at number 16 is, in my, in my opinion, a pretty underrated unit. It's gonna be the Tech Weiss uh, card. 
Great support unit for Battlefield and Super Battle Road. Has a high chance to stun and reduces attack the enemy's attack by 20%. That's the passive skill. The super attack will also lower attack. So again, this this unit not necessarily uh, to be included on the strongest team, but when you're talking about Battlefield and Super Battle Road, this unit is very very helpful for that regard. Uh, only falls into one category though, which is the uh, Realm of Gods. Now number 17 would be the Intelligence Godku um, Balanced Unit. He has the plus 80% attack and defense passive uh, when HP is 30% or above. He fits well into a Realm of Gods team. Um, lower rank than Agility because he has less categories because he does fall under the Realm of Gods and Pure Saiyans. Okay, so coming in at number 18 is going to be the Strength Type Rage Goku. Uh, it's a decent unit overall, very helpful in easy events uh, like the um, uh, Frieza and uh, Vegeta, I believe. So when you have strength, you know, type advantage, uh, this unit's very good. Plus the uh, Namek Saga units get a, uh, a bonus in those easy A events. Uh, does also have the uh, KO survivability passive, um, so decent options there. Uh, falls into three categories, Pure Sands, Full Power, and Namek Saga. Number 19 would be the Agility Gold Tanks. So he awakens to Super Saiyan. He has the attack plus 15% per, per key collected. And then uh, it does conflict with the physical version when Dokkan awakened. Um, you can run in reverse sometimes. And he falls under the Fusion category, Hybrid Saiyans, and Majin Buu Saga. Okay, at number 20 is the Extreme Intelligence Turles unit. A uh, great support unit for Super Battle Road and Battlefield. Now, if you have the agility version of Turles, it's a little bit obsolete, but you can run it. Certainly, run him on the uh, Extreme Intelligence team setup, or you know other other teams that um, you know he falls into. But the SA has a high chance to stun the enemy. Passive also adds plus three key and 20% attack for all allies. So certainly a helpful unit in that regard. Uh, falls into three categories, uh, only two relevant really, movie bosses and pure sands, but also the uh, low class warrior. Now number 21 would be the physical Sen Sen Shenron. Um, speaking of Battle Road, he's a pretty good option for extreme physical uh, Super Battle Road. His SA greatly lowers defense and his passive reduces enemies defense by 30%. He also has some pretty decent links, but he only has one category which is the Shadow Dragon Saga. Okay, let's talk about another unit at number 22. It's it's, it's a little bit uh, underrated. I don't really hear about them too much. It's the uh, Extreme Tech Super Boo unit. So once Dokkan Awaken, uh, the unit actually has a 30% HP recovery from damage dealt as part of the uh, passive. So uh, very helpful in, in my opinion on you know Super Battle Road. So with especially with the um, you know Extreme Tech versus the uh, Super Agility team setup. Uh, does fall into two categories, Majin Buu Saga and Enhanced Transformation. Now number 23, we have another underrated unit, which is the Intelligence Hellfighter 17. He hits for a very decent amount and actually helps out Extreme Intelligence for Super Battle Road and Battlefield. Um, he has the plus 90% attack and key plus 2 when facing only one enemy as his passive. And he does fall under the Androids category, so if you happen to pull one of the Android leads recently, uh, that would be helpful there. So the uh, passive skill for that unit is a little bit limited because it has to be only one enemy. So in, in uh, summary, he's probably more applicable in the uh, battlefield setting versus battle road. But I have that unit at 90% and he's actually uh, pretty decent in my opinion. Okay, so number 24 is going to be the Intelligence Type Super Saiyan Goku. Uh, he is a decent support type unit. Um, Probably the best advantage this unit will bring is the fact that it, it is a key changer and um, I, it's probably a good partner for the LR Super Saiyan Vegeta that recently came out on JP. Probably going to help his chances getting that 18 key super. Uh, falls into only one category which is pure Saiyans though. Now next we would have the Physical Super Saiyan Bardock, a decent support unit here. He has the plus 2 key and 20% attack for all allies. Um, his SA will also seal an enemy's SA, and he falls under, again, Resurrected Warriors and Pure Saiyans. <clears throat> okay, number 26 is going to be a similar unit. It's going to be the tech version of the Super Saiyan Bardock unit. Uh, again, a decent option, uh, SA sealer and also an orb changer, so you could certainly use them on uh, a couple of variations of team setups. Uh, same categories with the physical version. It is Resurrected Warriors and Pure Saiyans, but overall, uh, a decent unit. 
So uh, the World Tournament just ended, but coming up, if you don't have other AoE units, number 27 is the Tech Majin Vegeta. He's a decent alternative for that. So you may want to pick him up again if you don't have those. And he falls under Resurrected Warriors, Majin Buu Saga, and Pure Saiyans. I feel like eventually he's going to get an upgrade to probably some sort of easy aid, you know, later down the road. It's going to be a while, but it'll probably happen at some point. I can see that. Uh, number 28 is going to be the Super Saiyan uh, GT Trunks. You don't really hear about this unit too much lately, but he, he's got a pretty decent passive skill. It's 100% increase to attack, and SA also greatly lowers defense. So, again, he's a Super Saiyan unit, so he'll, uh, he'll definitely link up pretty well with the rest of the Super Saiyan team, depending on how you run it. But... Uh, he does fall into Hybrid Sands and Shadow Dragon Saga, so, uh, you know, decent option nevertheless. Number 29, we have the Intelligent Super Saiyan Goten. Um, also a decent option to select. His SA raises allies attack by 20% for one turn, and his passive plus 80% to attack, and he also reduces damage by 40%. Plus, he falls under the Hybrid Sands and Majin Buu Saga categories. Yeah, not a bad unit uh, at all, really. It's a uh, decent, decent enough package where he, he can uh, provide some benefits. Okay, so last at number 30 is going to be the Super Physical Type Pun Unit. Um, I mean, decent support for Hybrid Sands and Shadow Dragons uh, categories. Uh, the best thing about this unit is the passive skill where it's going to provide a 30% increase to attack for all allies. Again, only two categories, Hybrid Sands and Shadow Dragon Saga, but I think the passive more or less is pro probably uh, the biggest uh, benefit with this unit. Uh, I do want to you know, mention, uh, an honorable mention I guess in a, in a, in a, in a way, um, this is a really underrated unit in my opinion. It's the Super Tech. Uh, future Gohan unit. I actually have this unit at rainbow status and um, it's actually one of my favorite units. Um, SA does have the Kaioken mechanic uh, which is you know it's, it's going to continue to increase attack power even though he only has extreme uh, damage as part of the super attack. It quickly compensates for that due to the uh, Kaioken mechanic. Uh, passive skill is a 70% increase to attack and defense when HP is 80% or below. Again, at rainbow status, this guy is actually pretty decent. Um, so I just wanted to mention that because he's not really talked about as much, but I figured it, it's worthwhile mentioning because I do have him at 100% potential. So um, that's pretty much the the summary of you know the top 30 units in our opinion on um, what to select. I mean, it's it's obviously going to depend on what your actual deck is and what units uh, could potentially improve your deck overall. But you know, hopefully this kind of uh, uh, explained in some regard as to how to go about selecting your units and again don't choose them immediately uh, if you plan on summoning within the next couple of weeks because you might end up picking up uh, dupes for some of the units listed that's gonna waste a selection process for you all right so that's pretty much the uh, summary so hopefully you enjoyed the video thanks for watching hey, thanks guys